Wrestling. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Grind City Wrestling. This is episode 284. I am Dustin Starr. Be sure to get all caught up in the archives. That's grindcitymedia.com slash podcast. Take that subscribe button to Slap City wherever you're watching or wherever you're listening. Plus, you can hit us up at Grind City Media on social media. Last week, Mommy was back, and like always, she was on top. And since then, things have gotten more interesting on WWE Raw. We'll talk about that. This week, it's the best wrestling that we watched all week. Plus, we're finally going to give our Mount Rushmore of Chris Jericho characters. We've got the whole fam damnly back together here, so let's not waste any time. Ladies and gentlemen, it's bell time. Introducing first, my co-host, tag team partner, one out of three here in the trio, local business owner, traveling, I think, to Las Vegas this week to do some big stuff. I'll let him tell you all about it. And it looks like he's a decent parent. Ladies and decent. gentlemen, it's E-Rock, Eric McMahon. What's up, E? <laughs> What's up? Yeah, heading out to Vegas. I'll, I'll save that for the end. But um, yeah, man, excited. Uh, I love Jericho. So let's talk about him, man. I love Jericho. But first, making his return this week on Grind City Wrestling from Vegas and then also from Utah. And now finally back, ladies and gentlemen, it's Devin Walker. Baby! Baby. Yeah, I'm back. I'm back. And I I guess I forgot about the whole Jericho thing because it was my idea initially. And I didn't even bring it in my Jericho merch. And because y'all know I love my Jericho merch, bro. I got I got a Jericho hockey jersey. I got a couple of Jericho tees. Like, I guess I forgot about the whole situation. But we're here, though. We're here. We, we're, we've we're been here teasing it. Jericho. We've been teasing it for a couple of weeks. And you know what? I'm glad you said that about the the merch and the gear. Because Eric, I don't know if you know this or not, but but Devin is one of the real ones. He really oh, is. Like, oh, he, he even is. even on the Chris Vernon show, even if he's at the freaking basketball game doing his thing, he's got an Austin 316 shirt on. What'd you have on? The Undertaker the other day or something? Like literally. On the other day, yeah, I always have some shit on. I had uh I had Stone Cold on the show the other day. I had I saw you in in Vegas with a Stone Cold vest on. I did wait, where did you see that? It was on your Instagram or something. Oh, okay, yeah, I did wear that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, we had it was a party in Vegas, bro. I'm like, dude, only you can get away with dude, some shit. Like that. It was an NBA party right. and I wore a Stone Cold vest to it. <laughs> Look, man. I am the, the Memphis wrestling guy, and I don't think I can just wear a Stone Cold Steve Austin vest out in public just randomly, you know? I couldn't pull yeah, that, that off like you could. that would if you did that, Dustin, but yeah. De- Devin can get away with it. It's yeah, that was weird. Yeah, if you do, it'd be weird as hell. But no, dude, you should have seen how many people complimented me. They're like, yo, is that a Stone Cold vest? And I was like, yes. <laughs> yes. Then he, he ordered two drinks, smashed them together, and drank them right there on the spot. All right, you can follow E at E underscore... Mac Life. Mac Life. And you can follow Devin at Devin underscore Walker. Two. And of course, I'm at Dustin Star. E Rock, first, anything new? Did you actually watch wrestling this week? I did, as a matter of fact. And I do want to, we'll, we'll lead this because I started talking it with you about I know Jericho's going to dominate most of our conversation. So I need to lead with this. You know, you had Damian Priest and you had Gunther, you had the whole pull part. Like, we're going to build excitement to, towards WrestleMania, headlining WrestleMania. That's great and all. And it was fun. I was into it. Uh, you know, finally, kept, finally, by the way, finally, right? Kept, kept my attention. But how can your headline for WrestleMania and that story with Damian Priest take second fiddle to his own click? with Rhea Ripley and Dirty Dom and Liv Morgan story. Like that is a more entertaining story. And it's just like, I feel bad for Damian Priest. He's got the world title, he's main eventing, but people are more excited in his underlinks than they are him. Yeah, the whole story is great. Finn Balor is mixed into this thing with Liv Morgan and Dom. It's almost like he's telling on on I Dom for what's going on. Guy code, you son of a poor guy, man. Right, right. But then also, I don't know if you've noticed, but Finn Balor is sneaking around talking to Liv Morgan too. So I think there might be a little bit more to this than what we're seeing so far. But what do you think what the fans are more into Dirty Dom and Rhea Ripley and Liv Morgan than they are the pers- you know the, the headlining match of SummerSlam? Damian Priest and Gunther. I mean, that, what, that tells you that tells you everything I've been saying about the Zesty Taker from day one, bro. Nobody gives a damn. About him, so. <laughs> the Zesty Taker. When he that won the belt, when he won the 
when he initially when he won the belt at Money in the Bank, I was like, oh, this is not gonna go well. Cause like nobody's nobody's like kind of uh invested in the zesty taker, bro. Like there's yeah. nothing about him that that makes me say, oh, Damian Priest, there's a Damian Priest match going on. I want to watch right. it. Like from day but one. But we said last week that Damian Priest is that guy. It's just for something, there's one little thing missing. Like it's polish. I think well, I think it's his first championship run too, and he did earn it by getting over doing the match with Bad Bunny and all that. So I do think that they've made a star, but but even bigger, if if you remember back to Judgment Day when they had Edge and they kicked Edge out, and it was like, oh my gosh, what are they doing? And then I think that made that group a lot weaker. And then all of a sudden they continued. They stayed the course. And now when you fast forward, what, two years later, these guys are tag team champions. These guys are world champions. You've got all the major storylines going on involving really the judgment day. So we're going to talk about that here in our best wrestling. I'm pretty but, sure. But if you take that to bloodline, like they did it, it was still Roman was on top and he was the best storyline, <laughs> but that's not the same right. thing with Jimmy and Breeze. Very good yeah. point. Devin, Jimmy you're getting all. Devin, you're getting back from Summer League. Is there anything good going on that we need to hear about from that? Anything key? Uh, no, nah, bro. Just wrestling, bro. Like I, I told y'all, even when I'm when I'm gone, I'm still tapped into a lot of wrestling. Um, Summer League was cool, but I'm happy to be back talking wrestling and watching wrestling, bro. Like uh, I am. I know you're gonna ask me what's my best wrestling of the week. I want to give a shout out to our people at uh, at uh, TNA. The same anniversary was this weekend, and it was their highest attended show in the last, I think, ten years. Looked so awesome. Stupid. Salute to TNA, bro. Slammiversary was a big hit. Um, the Jeff Hardy shit was weird, but we'll talk about that another time. Um, Joe Henry didn't go over. That's fine. But still, it was a big show. Shout out to TNA Wrestling. My best wrestling of the week. Well, now, hold on. Hold on. We're going to get to the best wrestling oh, that we watched oh, all week. Not there yet? <laughs> we're, we're definitely going to get there. And the big shout out to our guy, AJ Francis, who... I don't care what anybody says. The dude is one of the best on the mic. He's one of the best in the ring. He's a big on dude. Twitter. Very, very, and on Twitter, very, very good. I would expect to see him back in WWE or NXT at some point. But yeah, Slammiversary packed out, looks awesome. And I think this relationship with NXT has really helped them out. But real quick, we're going to discuss the best wrestling that we watched all week. We're going to give our Mount Rushmore of Chris Jericho characters. And this is going to be a little harder than what you guys think, because we only have four to choose from. And Jericho has reinvented himself a whole bunch. Oh, that's is, is easy. This dude I can to take one off the list. Is this dude about to do the? Is this dude about to do a commercial right now? I am about to do a commercial because Memphis Wrestling is on fire. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Check it out. Don't miss Memphis Wrestling Live. Next Saturday, August 3rd, is our next free watch party at Dave & Buster's. Watch WWE SummerSlam with us. It's free. Next Sunday, August 4th, TNA Wrestling star Jonathan Gresham returns to Memphis Wrestling. Reserve your seat today and save $5 with the code TNA. Thursday, August 8th, Memphis Wrestling is coming to the Benton County Fair in Camden, Tennessee. Saturday, August 10th, it's Rumble on the Trail, Part 2, benefiting St. Jude. Featuring Tommy Dreamer versus Psycho Simon in the first ever Pontotoc Street Fight. Friday, August 16th, Memphis Wrestling Tag Teams with Clarksburg Volleyball Team for a huge fundraiser. Then Saturday, August 24th, the Tater Town Throwdown, Part 2 in Gleason, Tennessee. Sunday, August 25th, the Sandman is coming to Memphis Wrestling. All tickets are on sale now. Get yours right now at MemphisWrestling.tv. Welcome back to Grind City Wrestling. Commercial is done. Get your tickets, MemphisWrestling.tv. Jonathan freaking Gresham is making his return to Memphis Wrestling. Why are you looking mm. at me like that, Devin? Mm. Mm. What? Mm. What? What? Mm. what? The rumor mill told me. What? You know the uh, what do you call it? Well, you know when you do the on the on the Memphis Wrestling Show, you like the the executives backstage. I'm like, bro, you're the, the, the shut your championship ass. committee. I was like, there's one person on the championship committee. <laughs> I feel like everybody's looking at me when I say that too. Like, hey, well, it's not me, guys. Yeah, I don't no, do it. Every time you say it, I'm like, Dustin, you're talking about yourself. <laughs> but yeah, mm -hmm. the, somebody from the championship committee told me that there may have been a little rub between John and Grisham the last time he was here. So even I was surprised that he's going to be back for another show. Really? I had no idea that Think this on was that, even Justin. a thing. That's what Think the streets were telling us. Well, Jonathan Gresham is very matter of fact. I mean, like, I, I think Maria even said, really? They're, he's coming back? Wasn't he a jerk? 
and I don't know that he was a jerk, but there were certain conversations that had that was like, no, we this, you know, you just have to kind of be pretty direct. It was like, okay, but when it comes to wrestling, this dude is the best One technical best. wrestler well, well, in well, the well, world. Time out. Time out. All right, let people want to know. Let's go. Let's talk like we talked before we hit the record button. Now, listen, I hate you because I think you said something very profound that needs to be said to the masses. Is that when these guys come in, they think you're trying to get over on them. So they're a matter of fact. I think so. Because, because, and I can only imagine, listen, I'm not a wrestling promoter. Thank God. <laughs> no kidding. But I bet you, like slimy promoters are always trying to get over. So they come sure. in with their guard up with a chip on their shoulder and they're like, no, I'm doing this and only this and yeah, yeah. And then eventually, so speak on that. And then eventually they're like, okay, well, this guy's well. I'll tell you the Jonathan Gresham story. And it's, it's very, and you are hundred percent correct. Me and Devin literally having to be like, okay, let's set the stage for Dustin. Just tell a damn story that we all want. Why don't you just tell the story off the damn bat? I'm not trying to stir up the shit. You guys are trying to stir up the shit. <laughs> hey, and you asked me a direct. Explore. You asked me a direct question, and I'll give you a direct. Okay, so so last time Jonathan Gresham came, he was going to defend the Ring of Honor World Heavyweight Championship against Nick Aldis. So of course there was a discussion with Ring of Honor to make sure that was cool. There were discussions with Jonathan Gresham. Once he got here, he acted as if he never got the approval to defend the championship. And when he said that, I just looked and said, "Well, Jonathan, that's." The only reason you're here and he looked and he was like one second and he got on his phone and he started texting to me i don't feel like that's being a jerk i just feel like that's being a matter of fact to where maybe there was a miscommunication at some point and then when i said no no that's why you're here we got to have that and he's like okay and then we got it taken care of and then from then on it was great now our communication since then has been even better because he knows our product, he knows our facility, he knows that we've been going for 179 episodes and we're not going anywhere anytime soon. So now the conversation is a little bit different because there's trust. And like what he said, his guard is not really up at this point because he knows I'm not going to get over on him. In fact, I'm even talking to his wife, Jordan Grace, about coming back as well. And there was a, a little thing with her too. For instance, we had a t-shirt that we were designing. And once we printed the t-shirt, apparently the art that was on that t-shirt, we did not own. And so when it was brought to our attention, Copyright, Dustin. when it was brought to our attention, I paid the graphic designer, no questions asked. So that was squashed immediately. So it's almost like, oh, this, this promoter's trying to get over on us, you know, or whatever, you're getting us in trouble. Oh, he took care of it. Okay, well, cool. Maybe he's not trying to. So you're right, Eric, everybody is always got their guard up like something's and and one of the reasons one of the reasons too is stuff that happened with O Parker, Parker Boudreaux. Stuff like that. Promoters doing that, promoters, you know, jipping guys out of their money or whatever the case may be. But that's the Jonathan Gresham story. I don't think that makes him a jerk. I think that just makes it that we had a very small communication thing and we took care of it. Okay. Let's make sure. I just want to keep it keep it rolling the podcast, man. This is this is now, uh, we did as the kids we, would say keep it 100. We talked about this. Um, I, we talked about it before we got on the podcast too, but a little bit more of the story with with Parker not coming is you have to think of all the things that we have to go through here. Uh, we had to recreate all the lanyards, 50 lanyards that we had to redo, all the posters on the Wrestle Center wall that were advertising Memphis Wrestling Extra Large in a certain way with a certain character. I had to redo all of that stuff. And that was on a Thursday where the show was on Sunday. And so our print shop, big shout out to Speed Pro, they were awesome. They loved to hear the drama. They were like, hey, what Speed happened? Plug, Speed Pro. Speed Pro, Mr. Gary out there, he is awesome. They turn it around super fast and they love to hear the drama that but, came but with th it. Th so that, that's all cool and all, but <laughs> did did Boudreaux make his shot in Millington? He did not because not? I canceled the I canceled the flight. <laughs> Now let me tell you this too. Get let me tell you that trick. Get him, man. Fizz, Fizz, man. Look at this. Fizz, man, I Fizz, don't Fizz. even know. I don't even know how to get my credit back from Southwest. Okay, I don't know if I even get my credit back, but I knew one thing was for sure. He wasn't flying on my flight to go do another booking. <laughs> That's tough. All right, let's talk about the best resume. We got we got the T out of the way. 
Devin, you're up. Best wrestling you watched all week. Best wrestling I watched all week. Uh, like I said, uh, shout out to uh, TNA Wrestling for a great show. But I think my best wrestling of the week, and I think you already brought it up, uh, Liv Morgan got Dirty Dom chicken nuggets. She got him a PS5. She got him. Uh, she got him. She sent him some great photos. She just did. She did everything. But he still went back to mommy. And I think for me, bro, this whole storyline for me is the transition back into that edgy attitude era that we're about to see going into the Netflix situation, right? Oh, so yeah. for me, best wrestling of the week is the the subtle but obvious transitioning back until the the the. The good, the good times, bro. The times that made me fall in love with wrestling. The uh, a Rhea Ripley in the middle of the ring grabbing Dom by the hair and licking his face. I'm like, yeah, that's what I want, baby. Yeah. We're, we're this close from the live sex show we got from between Lita and Edge on live TV. Man, that showed her booby. Exactly. So if, if I'm Buddy Matthews back at home, and I know it's a work, and I know it's it's fake, but I would I would be unless unless she's licking my face when I'm at home. I'm like, damn. Dude, I'm not gonna lie, man. I had a. I'd be jealous. Yeah, I'd be jealous. Like, Hold on. I didn't I, realize Rhea Ripley was so as young as she was. Like the career oh, that this girl is yeah. going to have. She's what 27. Yeah, she's mm. gonna be one. She's that one is, I didn't. I, I I never. I never realized she was that young. Like the upside to her is, and, and th this trails into my best wrestling of the week because I finally got to watch wrestling. Like, I love the fact. That when Dom's Dom is a superstar, yes, now. yeah, he a is a superstar. I think he's out of his dad's shadow. I think he's running on his own now. And what I love is that he's invested in. He's like he knows who he is now. He's not Rey Mysterio Jr.'s son. He's right. Dirty Dom, and he knows that character. And he's trying to be nothing but. And I could watch him all the time he is so damn good it's so funny every time every time he gets on the microphone bro and it's so funny to watch yeah he's yeah people hate him he's like he's like people hate him so much he knows now if he says one word the crowd's gonna boo so like to have that kind of they, heat, bro they're in on it like they're in on it it's not turn the channel heat like they used to say x Pac has turned the channel heat you just be like oh x Pac or whatever that yeah. that's a good but Dom is different. I feel like the people are in on it. It's like Cena sucks. John Cena sucks. It's you like suck. you suck. No, you no. suck with Kurt Angle. It's like they like him so much that they know that he's a bad guy. And look, we're going to mess with him. We're not even going to let him talk on the microphone. That is an awesome spot to have. I think Dom is a future world champion. And then what you said about TNA, I have to somehow fit TNA into my wrestling routine. It has gotten so good what I'm seeing on social media that I need to, just like NXT, Raw, and all that kind of stuff, I need to sit down and watch TNA Wrestling every week. All right, E, best wrestling you watched all week? Dirty Dom. Dom. Dirty Dom, all right. And hey, we got e, 10 minutes to go, man. We got to get yeah, See, we talked, we, yep. the, the tea took a lot of the time, bro. It's fine. That's all right. That's what people, that's what people wanted to hear, so let's talk Best about wrestling it. that I watched all week was WrestleMania XL behind the scenes. I finally saw it all. It took me four sessions. It was always at the end of the night where I'm like, hey, I'm going to watch this, and I'd fall asleep in the same spot every time. But it was really, really good, and no wonder there are all those memes about The Rock. Everything was The Rock's idea and don't get me wrong, guys. He's telling the truth. All that stuff he said is true, but just hearing him sit there and say it's almost like I can see why they made a meme about it. Also, uh, honorable mention, well, Chad are you Gable. Are you the one to tell The Rock no? Hell no, I'm yeah, not. You don't want to be that person, bro. He going to send your ass Chad, to a window. Chad Gable has quickly become one of the best things every single week on Monday Night Raw. All right, now let's get to the Mount Rushmore of Chris Jericho. Who wants to go first? Break the wall because it was my great idea to talk about this. I think I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start it off. Uh, Been milking it. Been milking it even, for three even weeks. Even though I didn't bring any Jericho merch today, which is crazy. Still, I'm, I'll wear a shirt next week. But I guess I'll go. Uh, my number one is the one that I probably, as a kid, I probably loved the most. Is uh, the tune do tune do tune the clock going down? Break the walls down. Y2J. Chris Jericho is probably my number one because like, yo, why not, right? It was going into the year 2000, why not have Y2J the character be the that? The greatest unveil of a character in all of all time. It was. 
the countdown, doing it with the rock, the whole thing was just off the charts. So that's probably my number one. Shout out Y2J. I'm pretty sure we're gonna have some crossover in this, but so we will. My number two is one who initially I thought it was goofy as hell, but as it started to go on, I thought it was amazing. The list, Chris Jericho. He walked out to the ring every week with the clipboard and the pen. And every time he would write people's names down and say, you just made the list and just write it and just aggressively, you know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, that was, it got over. It got over huge. Initially, I was like, eh. But as time went on, I was like, okay, this is amazing. Number three is, I don't know what Jericho this is, whichever Jericho made the long list of holds. Is that Lionheart Jericho? That's the, no, like, no, that's still the 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 list Jericho. So, but, no, 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 it's no, not, because no, no. that was WCW. That would be either Crybaby Jericho, Lionheart Jericho, something like that. It's when he yeah, read the list of a thousand holds okay, to okay. Dean Malenko. Oh, yeah. yeah list right. of a thousand holds. So that, I go Lionheart Jericho and the last Jericho that I, uh, that kind of kicked off everything with AEW is the inner circle Jericho. Him being like the, the ringleader of everybody was Sammy Guevara. He introduced he carried them on their on his back. Yeah, he, he, carried, he had the company on his back for a while. So that's probably my my fourth one. Shout out Chris Jericho, one of the greatest to ever do it. He's like the Dwayne Wade of wrestling, bro. Dwayne Wade reinvented himself every moment of his career to keep his career going, and so did Chris Jericho. That okay. is a great list. I have to say that the learning tree Chris Jericho right now, I do appreciate that he and reinvented, but this is the worst rendition of Chris Jericho. Well, it's the presentation of it too. Like he's out of clearly out of shape and or it's, you know. it, I, I agree if he had maybe a different outfit or something to make it more different other I than just the comical. wave and the talk. Like I think that's comical, but anyways, it's not on it my means list. something else. All right. I'm your gonna, list. I'm gonna, I'm gonna agree with like listen, Y2J, if anybody has that other anything other than that, you're crazy. It's the greatest character unveil in the history of wrestling. And uh, when he unveiled, it was I popped so hard. Um, also, keep in mind he was he was like a mid Carter in WCW. He was a cruiserweight champion and TV champion. He had never sniffed the main event, and then he debuts standing in front of the Rock. Hell yeah! yeah. But so number two is uh, Jerichoholic or Lionheart or Crybaby or the Man of One Thousand and One Holds. I love it. He and so you got to give Eric Bischoff a lot of credit for bringing the cruiser weights in, but then Chris Jericho, in my opinion, stood alone, even though he wasn't maybe the worker or in the high spot worker that they were. But like when he's like, and never, ever, ever, like, listen, dude, he was gold and people loved him. So once you got him out of that environment, that's why people popped for him so much. So that was number two, inner circle. He carried the company on his back. He was hysterical. Unleash the hounds. Like the guy is comedy. And then let's just throw, give a, little, a, a little bit of the bubbly, a little bit of the bubbly. Remember that? Let's that go was to the back. I'm going to put both the pain maker and his stampede wrestling days as number four. Hey, shout out to Chris Jericho selling all those cheap ass bottles of champagne for AEW, by the way. <laughs> I've, I've got one. I actually got one. And during the pandemic, Maria drank it. So <laughs> I've got a drink of bottle. Bit of bubbly? She drank it. We were in the pandemic and we didn't have anything to drink in the house. She literally drank the bottle of champagne. I think Cody signed it actually. Cody and Brandy signed it when we did the interview with them. It's in and the archives, by the way. That's she tough. drank it. Yeah. That's tough. Pain maker you know, did not the pain maker did not hit it for me. For some reason I did not like the pain maker at all. Oh well, yeah. Yeah. Also, I did not like the Jera show. By the way, I have to throw that out there before I give my list where he was teaming with Big Show. I just thought that was a little yeah, weird. Was, yeah, right. was okay, well then, I don't know if you put this best, uh, the, never mind, you go. I don't want to step on you. I've got one that you guys don't have. So first of all, the list. When he was with the KO show and the list, the reveal is how he found out KO was turning on him. You just made the list. That's all over the place. People still still use it. There are memes and gifts and everything of him doing, you just made the list. So I'll have him on the list. Lionheart, Chris Jericho, WCW Crybaby, whatever you want to call him, him and Ralphus was hilarious. It's like every little thing they gave Jericho, whether it was winning or losing, didn't even matter. He was so freaking entertaining. Even with Ralphus, he was awesome. So I've got the list. I've got Lionheart, Y2J debuting with The Rock. Absolutely awesome. Also, right around Wait, that time, is this too. Is in any particular order? Not necessarily, but my best one is, uh, is last. Um, if you remember, he actually pinned Triple H during that run, and we thought he became the world champion. That was a huge pop. My number one, though, is the suited Chris Jericho. 
The best in the world? Two, I am the best in the world at what I do. Yeah. And that's 2007. He feuded with HBK and threw him through the Geratron in the center of the ring. He was using big words. He won the, the world title. I forgot about that. He won the world title, the big gold. And there was even a main event poster where he was about to push a button wearing his suit and stuff. But he would say, I'm the best in the world at what I do. That is my Mount Rushmore of Chris Jericho. I, I also, love it. Like the best in the world was on my was on my um uh honorable mention. But now when I come to think about it, like even Y2J and the best of the world, is like he 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 was never outshadowed by big guys in that time too, which was awesome, which made him such a big deal. You look, he was feuding, you know, the best in the world time. He was feuding with, you know, HBK at that time. He won the the mm -hmm. the first uh, world title, um, dual belt, you know, Triple H. He's a big dude, but uh, who else was the other guy? Um, the Rock. Well, he beat beat Rock, Stone Cold, all in the same night to win the 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 championship. He won Stone the two Cold. belts. But Stone and Cold I don't even know. I don't even know that he was super duper over at that point because he was kind of a transitional champion, even though he won that the first time. And then later he was able to be built into a bigger mega star. We're running a little bit low on time. Memphis Wrestling is live next Sunday. Check it out. Next Sunday, August 4th, Jonathan Gresham is coming to Memphis Wrestling. Get your tickets right now. Welcome back. E, what you got going on this weekend? Real quick. Flying to Las Vegas tomorrow night. Going to go train with Big John McCarthy, the legendary UFC MMA referee. You ready? You ready? Let's get it on. I'm going for three days. Me and him going to be training, so I'm pretty pumped up about it. Oh, it's time to level up. D, what you got going on this weekend? Uh, actually, I got to make a correction real quick. He is not the Dwayne Wade. He's the Vince Carter of wrestling. As you know, Vince Carter started as a high flyer in the NBA, and he, he lasted 20 years in the, 22 years in the NBA because he slowly changed who he was. So Chris Jericho is the Vince Carter of wrestling. Just, I'm gonna leave that there for you. Uh, this weekend, uh, I'll be in Murray. I'm wearing this jersey for a reason. I'll be in Murray, Kentucky. Our boy John Moran is getting inducted into the Murray State Athletic Hall of Fame. So I'll be there this weekend. Uh, I'll be doing that. And that's all I got for you, bro. Sounds good. It is my anniversary weekend with my lovely Maria. So I know she's not listening to this podcast. No, you're all, not allowed to tell do her, anything. But tell her I said that I love her. <laughs> I am Justin Starr. He's E-Rock, Eric McMahon, and for Devin Walker, baby. Say it. So long, everybody. I believe in Joe Hendry. You believe in Joe Hendry. Hey, I'm going to try to get him on the show, bro. Do it. Do it. I know. I knew I knew a girl that used to hump him. <laughs>